Hello and welcome to another episode of Integrity TV. Well, we're back with Nancy Clayton after her 20 weeks of being on the Integrity program. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. No, I said welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit. It's been 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. A lot of changes have happened. Uh, how do you feel? I feel fantastic. You do? Incredible. I really do. Good. Tell me, uh, what do you think the biggest change that you've noticed so thus far? Um, well, I mean, physically or mentally, you know, mentally, so much more clarity and energized. Mm -hmm. um, physically, energized again. Not tired, not lethargic. You know, I just, I feel good. I really comfortable, is it, I guess. Nothing's, I'm not wearing tight things and, you know, I just feel so much better. I can say it hasn't been a sacrifice. It's been, I mean, it's three days a week. It's not seven days a week. It's not five days a week. It's three days a week. And you pick the three days that you come. Um, the first ten weeks was a much shorter time. I could be in and out of here in an hour. Easy. Probably less than that. Um, and I still had great results. And then the second 20, uh, 10 weeks rather, you know, the workout doubled in time and stuff. But I can, you know, I can still get out of here in an hour and a half if I really need to. I choose to take my time, but if I have to, I know I can do it. You know, I hear also that, uh, you know, women who have busy schedules, you know, they, they work, they take care of the kids, they, they, they make most of the meals most of the time. Uh, that sometimes they feel exhausted by the end of the day. You said you felt like that before. Sure. Um, what could we tell women out there that do have that feeling right now and feel that their health is kind of hopeless at this point? Mm -hmm. What could you say to encourage them? Um, that, yeah, you know, you do feel that way. And at first when you're working out, it's one more thing in your schedule. But in very short time, the energy starts to shift. And you're, you know, adding something else to your schedule, but you're gaining energy and you're feeling better. And it's, you know, the old adage about, you know, an airplane when the oxygen mask falls, you know, put yours on before you help somebody. And it's true in life for all women. I mean, you can't, you have to take care of yourself to be any good to anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, so you need to, it's necessary for your family and for everyone in your life and yourself. And if you don't want to think about yourself, think about everybody else. 20 weeks ago, Nancy walked through these doors, she had a slight weight problem. Now be nice. I'm being nice. <laughs> yes. I said a slight weight problem. Um, she was on nine different medications. She had type 2 diabetes. And pretty much what she's telling me today is that in the beginning she felt lethargic. Mm -hmm. Now she feels like she's energized both physically and emotionally. But I'm going to go over some of the pre and post numbers and metrics that we've noticed with Nancy along this 20 week journey and I want to fill you people in on exactly what that was. So she doesn't like talking about her weight but we're going to <laughs> disclose it here to all of you so you can enjoy this. <laughs> she tipped the scales at roughly 196 pounds 20 weeks ago. Today she weighed in and she's at 168. So she's She's lost quite a bit of weight there. 28 pounds. Oh, 28 pounds. Not much. that I'm counting. She did the math for me. Thank you very much, Nancy. You're welcome. Her fat percentage in the beginning was 37.4. 35% is considered clinically obese. 40% is considered morbidly obese. So she was in between being clinically and morbidly obese when she walked through the door. Today, she was measured at 29.6%. So she's actually four-tenths of a percent underneath where she needs to be. So she's not even considered overweight today. We've got to congratulate her on, on that Yay. feed as well. We're not done yet. She thinks she's done, but this, isn't, this is only the start. <laughs> um, glucose levels, it means that her blood sugar levels at the time were ranging in the 240s. Now they average at about in the 120s. Some days she gets down as low as the, uh, the, the 100, mm -hmm. somewhere close to 100. She's still got a little ways to go to before she actually totally eradicates the, the insulin resistance in her body, but she's done a fantastic job. Uh, so now, it's, like I said, it's gone from 240. She's basically cut that in half. Her lab results, mainly her hemoglobin A1C, which is a test that 
determines how much sugar has been around the red blood cells within her blood that will tell us if, the, if they're exposed to too much sugar or not. Anything over 6.0 is considered a, a diabetic. She was a 7.2 20 weeks ago when she came here. She was retested and measured and she's a 6.0 so she's on the borderline of not being a diabetic anymore which I can congratulate her for. Um, that's fantastic. Waist size, another big one. We talked about the correlation between her waist size and her blood sugar levels. When she came 20 weeks ago, she had a waist size of 47 inches. That's... that's Thanks for pausing. <laughs> I, it's, it's one of the things that people want to <laughs> recognize that if, you, if you're dealing with belly fat, you're dealing with a big problem because it leads not only to diabetes, but high blood pressure, high cholesterol. I had you know, all of that. And, and cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. You know, in essence, she's really, she's made herself younger over the past 20 weeks. I'm going to try to get her back into infant stages, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. Project birth weight. Uh, but with a lot of hard work, we may be able to get her back down into her 20s. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Yeah, her, her waist size, and she wants to point out, is 35 <laughs> now. So a difference of 12 inches. Am I doing the math correctly there? Yes. I didn't even have to use my abacus. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about cost savings and medications. Oh, yeah. Okay. We know that medications cost consumers even a co-payment, but the actual cost of the medication itself, which drives up the cost of health care in this country, is enormous. Mm -hmm. But just in co-payments alone, you averaged how much per month? I'm thinking it was about $150, but I think some months it was even higher because I say it was on nine medications, but there were others thrown in at different times too that just weren't consistent. So $150 in co-payments, I have, I have really good insurance. And why do you think you were taking these medications? Um, because of the diet, because I was overweight and I was unhealthy. So what we really can determine is that you people out there have a lot to say about what your health is going to be like in Nancy's case. You know, just like many of you get caught up in saying this is a quick fix, this is the easy answer. There is no easy answer. The answer is taking care of your health by exercising correctly and eating the right foods. Mm -hmm. And in, in your case, taking some of the supplements that help to, yeah. to expedite the, the, the process of you getting healthy again. Mm -hmm. um, now your medications, I believe you're down to one. I am, which I really, my doctor has told me I can probably go off it. It was one last diabetes med. Um, I've been... A little cautious. I'm finishing off the prescription I have, and then then I will be on. And it. what copayment does that cost you per month? Uh, ten dollars. So, think of it: one hundred and fifty dollars a month to ten dollars a month. This is this is an incredible amount of savings. Not to mention the fact of the benefits you get from your life now that you didn't have before. Mm -hmm. um, so that I congratulate. I want to say goodbye for now, and we will visit Nancy again, and I will have some other photos for you to see, uh, some before and after at the beginning and the end of this clip. And I hope you enjoyed Nancy's journey. Journey. Bye now.